Hey guys, how's it going? <clears throat> Let's see if we can get this going. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay. Whoa, my camera's all bright. <laughs> okay, one second. All right. Lower that exposure. Okay. Let's see if we can get this chat going. Hey, what's up, Warner? How you doing? <clears throat> okay, let me see. I just got to share some links here. There we go. Share to my Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Hey Bronco. It's actually Shane, but close. Everybody calls me Sean. Not a big deal. Share to a page. Okay. All right. How are you guys doing today on this wonderful Monday? So I was trying to decide <clears throat> what I want to sculpt today. Um, so it's sculpt timber, this thing that Ryan Kingsland likes to put on. Um, and today's prompt is teeth. So I was thinking about doing something with teeth and I was talking to my, my friend Marty and uh, we were talking back and forth. And he's like, you should do venom. And so I found, well, he found a venom image and then um, another image was uh, dinosaurs. So, oh, no worries, Bronco at all. No worries. <laughs> yeah, Mortar, it's like uh, angel from the heavens, right? <laughs> so... You guys hear me okay? Does this work? I always worry my, my audio is not being kind to me. Hey, Lucia, how you doing? Um, so, let's see. Anyway, so I'm kind of deciding between this Venom and um, a dinosaur from uh, We Are Back, this old Steven Spielberg dinosaur show. Uh, so let me, let me show you here. So I was thinking about doing this Twitch from Scotty Young. This one right here. I haven't done like a Marvel character in a while. <clears throat> yep, Sculpt Timber for sure. Everything's great? Okay, awesome. Sounds working? Sweet. So, um, yeah, nobody really has more teeth than Venom, right? So... <laughs> So I was thinking about sculpting this guy, even though I re I'm really not a fan of concepts that are directly from the side because it, it's much more difficult to um, figure out the, uh, you know, what it looks like from the front. Yeah, it's not Venom. It's, see, it's ven if, what if Venom was possessed, what if Venom possessed Deadpool? That's, that's kind of how this, this is, it's like a Deadpool Venom, which is kind of even more fun, so... Uh, but the, the goal is, he's got tons of teeth. Hey, Sheswata, how you doing, man? <clears throat> oh, Carnage? Yeah, Carnage would be pretty pretty good, too. Um, all right. Hey, Amir, how you doing? First time. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so this is where I left off last time with this Luigi sculpt. I'm going to actually uh, start here. And we'll start over again with this one. <laughs> yeah, right? That Tom is very, very Tim Burton-ish. Or, and I'll let you guys help me decide, or I could do like this dinosaur right here. Can you guys see this dinosaur? So I really like his, his, his head shapes and stuff. And he's very cartoony. And he's got, you know, kind of a mouthful of teeth, but they're, they're not like super sharp teeth. They're kind of cartoony, dull, dullish teeth. So I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Can I share my project files? Like, what are you talking about? Like, share these models? I, I typically don't share my models. Hey, what's up, Neil? You like the dinosaur? All right, cool. Okay, let me save this. I think there was a better, a close-up version, but let me... Uh, bu -bu -bum. References. Okay, let's put it here. Oh, 
There was another close up of his face. The dino. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. the The audience has spoken. <laughs> yeah, venom would be difficult for sure, but his you know his face is full of teeth, so I figured, hey, teeth. Okay, one second. I'm just gonna grab this one this this shot of a close up. I guess it's kind of the same. <clears throat> yeah. All right. <laughs> now a bunch of people saying Venom. <clears throat> well, maybe I'll do Venom next time. We'll see. We'll see. So I I made uh. Well, yeah. So what I try and do with these streams is I try and finish a character in these two hours that I stream. And Venom I probably would not finish in two hours, but the dinosaur, <laughs> dinosaur possessed by Venom, but the dinosaur would probably work for a two hour session. So I'm kind of leaning more towards that. Hold on a second. I'm just saving this. Uh, this is a, a better reference here. Okay, let's bring it in. Ba -bum -bum. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this one in the corner, and I haven't seen too many of this, uh, too many uh, 3D versions of this guy I've done. So hey, what's up, Dan? <laughs> okay, so let's get rolling here, and just start blocking this guy out. <clears throat> and I've had a bit of a a throat cold, so I apologize if I'm clearing my throat while I'm, while I'm sculpting here. <laughs> People need, so have you, have you guys seen the, I actually have a story about that. Um, so last, last week I was at the Lightbox Expo in Pasadena, California. And um, the, uh, so I had a booth there and J. Scott Campbell was there, and J. Scott Campbell, he, he draws Venom, he loves Venom, and uh, he loves this design in particular that we did for Disney Infinity, so I don't know if you guys have seen it before, but um, so a lot of us worked on this Venom, um, and this is, yeah, this is kind of how it, it turned out. But, uh, yeah, he turned out really fun. So this is the Venom I worked on, I helped with, for Disney Infinity. So I've already done a Venom. <laughs> and there you can kind of see it. But Do you scope the teeth or just the character with teeth? What does that mean, Bronco? I don't understand. Do you scope the just teeth? So I'm going to do a character with teeth. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, for this, for this, I'm just gonna make the head. I'm not gonna make the whole body. Not this, not this time. Like I said, I like to try and uh, I like to try and um, finish a a character or a bust or something within the two hours if I can. So sometimes it will go two sessions, sometimes three, sometimes more. It depends on you know kind of the what I'm wanting to do. But I've been trying to kind of com condense them into one or two one or two sessions. So, okay, so I'm looking at this head here, and a second. So I'm just going to squish this sphere down. So this is the little head, and then this is the, um, the upper part of the mouth. Samuel, well, uh, Disney owns Marvel, so, yeah, that's why it was in there. Anyway, J. Scott Campbell loves that design, so I was able to, my friend um, Dave Igo from Sideshow Collectibles introduced us, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, 
J. Scott Campbell's work. He, he did Danger Girl and he draws a lot of comics and uh, it was really, really nice to talk to him. Yeah, Bronco, it's like, it's like Inktober, but it's sculpt, it's sculpt. So if you look up sculpt timber, and there's a bunch of prompts, just like Inktober. Yeah, they also own Star Wars too. They are, they're trying to purchase everything, I guess. <laughs> I'm just looking at these shapes. If you could make anything that Disney owns now in the Infinity style, what would it be? I'd like to see a guy brush three wood from Monkey Island. Um, one of my students actually made a really nice guy brush. I don't know, sometimes his name's Lucky Lucky D if he stops by. Maybe I'll have him uh, post a link to it. He did a really good job on one. But yeah, that'd be fun. Um, I was actually thinking about taking, uh, taking Boba Fett and... Uh, Hey, what's up, Ash? A cubed in the house. Um, I was thinking about taking my Boba Fett character and uh, making uh, the um, Mandalorian out of it. I thought that would be kind of fun. Okay, so... <laughs> Have you been playing Borderlands too, Ash? I, I just I just barely picked it up. It's a lot of fun. Who are you playing as? Barely played 10 hours. Oh, dang it. <clears throat> I'm playing as... Uh, I'm playing as Flack. Is that, is that his name? Flack, the robot guy, animal controller hunter guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. So what pet is, oh, Skag this is his pet. I chose the, uh, the uh, it's kind of like a spider thing, just because it gives me d defense and health and stuff. So it's been, it's been fun. Everyone picks five, because Flag's amazing. He's great. All the other ones seem like, you know, all the other Borderlands. The Rift and Sniper combo. I'll have to try that. Okay, so let's see. I just gotta... The goal, the goal to, to the blockout stage is, is to put the shapes in and then react. And adjust. So he's not gonna look... Um, He's not going to look like he should for a while. <laughs> the Nick Valentine. How you doing, Daniel, by the way? Welcome. Um, I, I tried, well, the, the siren kind of sounds fun. Just because she, she does some otherworldly stuff. It seems pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Turn on dynamic subdivision. <clears throat> I found me a pretty sweet sniper rifle. That takes them out pretty good. Although I just, I'm playing it on PC and I'm having a hard time with the, uh, with the aiming. The aiming just seems off. I don't know if it's if it's just those Borderland games or if it's me or what. Well, yeah, Aaron teach their own. It's it just depends on if you like that art style or the, you know whatever. It's all good. So this guy's eyes are kind of tall and elongated and shoved in there. So that, this will be interesting to see. Um, I do like the hand painted art style. It's it's pretty pretty difficult to do. So I commend those guys on on making it work. All right, 
I am going to overlap these in the center, like a couple eggs, and then we'll get everything else in there. <clears throat> so, well, it's, the thing is, Lucia, is, like, I, I mean, I don't even know, but I have the sniper rifle, and it has, like, the crosshairs, and it's, like, right on the head of the, of the dude or whatever, and it's, like, and it misses. <laughs> like, wait, what's going on? Why is and then I'll and then I'll like accident then I'll have it off, and and shoot and it'll hit him and I don't understand why it's hitting him because it it wasn't there, so that's that's what I'm talking about. It's kind of weird. Okay, I'm gonna split unmasked points to put the eyes in a in a separate sub tool. I always like to do that when I'm making my characters. And then we'll do the. These will be the eyebrows. Like I said, it's going to take me a while to make this guy look like this guy, so be patient with me. Let's see here. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Hitch. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Lucy, it just means it's it just <laughs> it just feels like it's not it's not accurate. There you go. That's the word doesn't feel accurate it feels squishy I don't know what's going on with it okay now for this it's gonna be interesting because I really want to build see how this is like it's almost like a, a tube up and down the eyeballs so I want to make a, a cavity um mim diamond it just depends um, if I want to make the whole thing, it depends on how detailed I want to take it. Like, if I was going to make this a production character, like uh, in a game or a film or something like that, it'd probably take me between four and six weeks to complete. But since this is just for fun on a on a live stream, um, I'm just going to try and get his bust done today during this live stream. But we'll see if if I can pull that off or not. This kind of looks like an alligator. Um, yeah, it depends on if I actually take him to, uh, if I do the retopology or not, or yeah, there's a lot of factors in that goes into, you know, how long is it going to take me to actually finish him out like a full character. Um, you can watch, I did, uh, I actually did a full character and a cowboy, um, during my live streams like a year ago. So you can go back and watch that if you want. And it has like a, here I'll show you where to go. If you go to uh, ZBrush Live, just look for that in Google. And if you go to this top one right here. And Ashley, A cubed, is one of the streamers here. So here we are. Hi. Okay, if you go to uh, presenters right here. And here's me and here's Ashley right here. Uh, Michael Pavlovich. Brendan, there's f phenomenal people streaming if you want to see other streamers. Danny is another uh, cartoonish uh, streamer. He does stylized characters. Steven Anderson, all these guys. Uh, Folygon does stylized characters as well. So you can go and check out their any of these streams. But if you click on past broadcast and schedule right here, you can see all of my past streams right here. So... Um, like, like I said, I've been doing a lot of uh, bus recently, so just the head so I can get them done in, in a stream or two. Um, then if we go back, I don't, I can't remember how far back. Let's go on page four. Let's see, nope, even further. Six. I've been streaming for a while, you guys. This is, I think this is episode like 98 or something like that. Um, but here's here's part of the dinosaur. Um, that I finished up probably in this episode. I'm not sure. Maybe. Anyway, you can go back and find them here. There it is. There's the dinosaur. So, and there's the cowboy that rides him. Yeah. <laughs> is it almost 100? We're getting close to 100 streams. Uh... So, uh, 
uh, Bogdan, yeah, you can, it, but it's called Z Remesher. So it will essentially just rebuild the entire mesh if you have triangles, which is uh, it's really cool. But as far as um, as far as like you know, like in Maya, if you have a triangulated mesh and you try to do a make quads, it doesn't do that. It's essentially like um, remeshing the entire thing. That's why it's called Z remesh because it's rebuilding the entire thing. All right, I'm going to use this appendage brush. So all of these brushes right here across the bottom that you see here, these are all brushes that I've made. Well, not all of them, but the ones with these strange icons where you can see the profiles. These are brushes that um, I either made or I altered. And this insert multi-mesh brush is just a bunch of primitives that are made of quads. So I give away these brushes on my website. If you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, you can go uh, grab those brushes for free. And I also give away my user interface there too, if you're interested. Thanks, Neil. Hey, what's up, Derek? Okay, so here we go, Ash. We're gonna snake hook it. Ashley loves the snake hook brush, as do I. Snake hook is kind of like a, a modified move brush that's a little more squishy. It's, it's, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And we have a running joke. Yeah, you showed up a little too early, a cubed. We have a running sh joke that if you say snake three times, Ashley will show up. <laughs> yep, down <Dan>, right. <laughs> like Beetlejuice. Cause it's awesome. All right, let's. Man, he looks angry. Look at him. He's like, grr. Got the grr face. Got to turn on topological. So what topological does is, um, it basically makes it so you only af affect the first object you touch. Angry Yoshi. What kind of game is that? Angry Yoshi. <laughs> and when things get too close to the center, it's easier to use the inflate brush than try, because trying to move or snake hook it across the center doesn't really work. So you, if you inflate it, you just have to kind of be careful. I need more volume in here. That will help. That will help him not look so angry, Yoshi. Okay. <laughs> angry duck. He's like this big, huge bill. <laughs> okay. I want to get another large volume down to represent the neck. It just it looks like his head's just kind of floating in space looking all weird what's wrong with your head duck <laughs> okay let's see How to avoid overlap, I'm not, um, it depends. I'm not really trying to avoid it right now. I wanna co combine these two shapes though. So how do I combine shapes? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag out his shoulders just so he doesn't look super weird. And then clip it off so it looks more like a bust that like I could put it on a stand or something and then I want to tilt his head forward 
and then we'll combine. Oops, give me that lasso. Ashley, you're not going to uh, you're not going to the Zebar Summit this year again, are you? I'm waiting for the year you actually go. When's that ha When's that happening? <laughs> they they need to send you down for the for the scoped off. So what what is the shortcut to cut your sub tool? Oh, it's just this clip curves right here. Clip curve brush. So if you hold down control plus shift, it's going to give you this line right here. And then um, you can hold down space to move it around. And then it, it will also respect masking. So it's going to, it's, they should call it the squish brush instead of the clip brush, because what it's going to do is it's going to take all of the geometry on the faded side of the line and squish it to the dotted white line. So if I let go, whoa, sorry. Never mind, I got the, this button turned on here. Let me do it one more time. Um, so there we go. If I let go, it's gonna take all that geometry and smash it down to that dotted white line, if that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Big mistake was watching speed sculpts in YouTube, try to make it faster in ZBrush. No, that's not, it, the best way to learn is to take your time and uh, don't don't pick up any bad habits if you can help it. So I also have I also teach a course online. It's called the 3D Character Workshop, and I teach exactly how to do this. Um, <laughs> Kevin, I need to. I was gonna. I need to do that for like a Halloween costume or something. Okay. Okay. So what I wanted to do was to actually, um, let's see. I wanna roll this forward, but why is it ignoring? Okay, there it goes. So I wanna move the eyeballs and the head at the same time. And the way I do that is by turning on this transpose selected subtools and that it's moving the eye and the head together. Cause I just wanna tilt his head more forward so I can actually see his eyeballs from the front. So now I can turn that off now that I'm done with that. Um, pizza boxes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for how long can I stick to ZBrush in the process of making a game character? So uh, essentially you, uh, you, you build your entire high resolution character inside of ZBrush. At least I do. That's, that's typically what I do. And then you go do some retopology and UVs and get it game ready in a different software. But I do my high resolution character all inside of ZBrush. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna do auto groups and put all these um, sub tools in different groups. So I want to um, put these two in the same group. Uh, I want to shrink this head down even more. It's really small back here. Is surface snapping possible in poly mesh? I don't understand the question. Um, you can, there's surface snapping inside of ZBrush, but it's typically reserved for the topology brush and like if you're drawing curve brushes across the surface. Um, that will all snap. But if you're if you're trying to do an insert multi mesh, it will snap to the surface to draw it. See how it's it draws it on the surface like that. So there is some surface snapping. Okay, so I'm gonna mirror and weld this thing together. When you're making a low res model for a game engine, do you use ZBrush Decimate or something else? Dan, I use something else. Um, I usually retop in a different program like Maya. Um, and then I just redraw everything on top of here. 
So, Kevin, it's actually open right now. You can go check it out right now. I am going to close it pretty soon, but... So, if you go... I'll just show you really fast. If you go to my website, if you want my, my brushes, they're right here. And if you're interested in my uh, workshop, it's right here. And when you click on this, um, this is me. It's kind of meta right now, <laughs> but this is me talking about the course. And this is student work, and I just talk about everything. So you can just go check it out right, right there. Everybody hates Retop, Samuel. <laughs> yep. Um, I actually, I've, I'm, I've not used Topo, well, I have used Topo Gun. I'm not a fan of using Topo Gun for Retopology. Even though it's in the name, Retop, you know, Topo Gun, it just doesn't, uh, it's, I, I'm not a fan of it because there's some broken things in it and they are, they haven't supported it for a while. So anyway, okay, so I'm going to um, isolate this. Looks like a Muppet now or a thumb or something. Um, and then split it off and then mer um, I want to stitch it together. Stitch, stitch, remesh by union. That will stitch it together. Accept it and then Z remesh it. Do like a one, maybe a let's try a one. And that'll essentially make this whole thing a, a, a solid piece. Because I, I want to get rid of that transition between the two. Can I not make it? <clears throat> yeah, I was just wondering if I had symmetry on in the first place, Neil, but thank you. Try Z remeshing it again. Okay, now it's got symmetry. All right. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Is there a tool to make retopology in ZBrush as efficient as my R3 coat? There is, but it's I, I prefer not to um, do my retopology inside. I don't retopologize the entire character in ZBrush, but if I need to make uh, pieces like armor and things like that, that's when I use this topology brush. But it's, um, I typically don't use the topology brush to do, to retop the whole character. I'll take it to like Maya or something like that. Okay, let's see. Turn up this intensity and smooth this out. And his neck is much thicker. It's like it needs to transition into that jaw better. Let's see. Um, yeah, I do. I usually I'll I'll do some unwrapping, but it's more like a temporary thing. Do you know what those grayed out sub tools in your sub tool list are? I get those sometimes with no idea why. Oh, these right here. Um, it's just your active sub tool. So, um, but these guys, I don't, I think these are, I don't know what these are actually. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. I've never seen that before until you just barely pointed it out. It looks like it's left over from what was loaded in here before because it's, it looks like it's from my Luigi. Uh, that's weird. Okay. Huh. That's a bug. That's weird. I'll have to. I have to blame Kyle for that. <laughs> um, it is an online course, and there is uh, there's a community, and there's also a Discord channel, and there's also uh, a live Friday Q and A session, and there's a live student only live stream. So what I'm doing right now, I do a special one for for the students only on Wednesdays. Might be something to do with the history. Yeah, that's really strange. I, I don't think I've seen that before. That's really strange. I wonder if they know about it. So uh, the Zebra Summit is coming up in in Hollywood at the Noman School. It's September 26th through the 29th, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, 26th through the 29th. So I will not be streaming uh, on the 30th. Uh, 
Um, does Z wrap work well? I don't know what Z wrap. Are you talking about Z, Z unwrap? Like, are you talking about uh, UV master? This unwrap, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this year's. Um, I'm just, I'm not gonna be doing anything as far as like, I'm not doing any workshops or anything like that this year. Um, I'm just going as a, as a fan of ZBrush. Um, a lot of my friends go, so it's nice to catch up with them. Kind of push this in. Okay. So I'm trying to decide if I want to uh, the these these smile these this cheek meat right here this big smile it looks like a separated piece and I'm almost wanting to keep it separate for as long as possible. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to join it in there just yet, but I think I am going to Z remesh this thing. Let's just see, clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> oh, Dan, you might get to go. That'd be awesome. Works really nice for wrapping existing topology on top of scans. Yeah, I haven't used Z wrap. I haven't used it, but for custom designs like this, yeah. Oh, hey, Quint, yeah. It was a pleasure to see you again at Lightbox. Thanks for the feedback. You are welcome, sir, anytime. Are you gonna be at the ZBrush Summit too? Okay, so now what I wanna do is kind of work on the, the hollowing out of this bottom mouth and make that, that lip actually work. I want to do an auto groups again, put these back in their own groups. You're just going so you can shout something again during the presentation. Yes. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. So last year I shouted, we got folders because I was so excited. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. So I, I obnoxiously shouted, we have folders. <laughs> that was funny. At least I thought it was. It was probably obnoxious to most people. <laughs> yeah, there there are some real so uh, Chaos Masons are going to be there. Really excited to to meet those guys. They do Fortnite skins. Um, uh, Aaron Bernhardt, I'm taking a workshop from him. He does classic. I want to call it like classic anatomical figure sculpture. So it's almost. It's almost like a figure drawing, but you're sculpting instead, which I'm, I'm really interested in. So inflate out this lip. I'm actually gonna cut in a few more lines here with the Z modeler brush, insert in a couple edge loops just to help me uh, inflate this out a little bit and keep that curvature. Can anyone go to the ZBrush Summit? Yes, and it's free. You just need to find your way there and uh, find a, a place to stay, but the, the event is free to go to. You'll be there all three days? Okay, great. It'll be awesome to see you again. Should be a good time. All right. And then I can, I like to, uh, like to define the lower lip. The reason I added some of this extra geometry is then I can use this pinch brush to define that line across there. That's too much right there. Oh, in Germany, no, there's a, uh, there's a uh, Trojan horse was unicorn. That's probably the closest overseas event, sort of like the ZBrush Summit that there is. Okay, now. We should talk him into it, you guys. Get, get Paul Gabery to go to Germany and India and Joseph Drust. All those guys, that'd be great, right? right? <laughs> I'm 
hollow this out even more, push it down in and close it up. I always do zero mesh before decim and decimate. Yeah, because Maya can't really handle the polygons, so um, sometimes you have to. Uh, another thing you can do, Bronco, is um, if you have a low resolution Z remesh mesh in here already that's been subdivided, you can bring in one of the lower resolution subdivision levels into Maya. You don't need the highest, highest level, and that still works. But I'm actually sponsoring the Zebra Summit again this year. Um, <clears throat> if you go to, let's see. Yeah, if you look for uh, Zebra Summit 2019, um, see it's free registration, September 27th through the 29th, and then the live sculpt offs on the 26th. And um, here are the events, presentations, workshops, so if you want to know what the presentations are, you can check it out. Um, like Newt Studios, Ubisoft. Yeah. Really, really awesome stuff. I'm trying to see when the uh, Chaos Masons are going to be. Uh, Maria. So um, if you go to Sponsors, you scroll down, Nomen, Wacom, Keyshot, Form Labs. All the way down right there yay so this is me I'm giving away some uh, free seats of the 3d character workshop during the ZBrush summit so should be fun love to see you guys there if you see if you are going and you see me there please say hi the cute jeweler <laughs> sat next to each other in the main hall I'm not sure if I'll make it but Make it this year, but I'm gonna try. Cool. Um, Bronco, I I will. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. I might have to res resort to the uh, Sculptress Pro, but I'm not sure. I could just. Um, I might just model him in with the Z Modeler brush. We'll see. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with this, and and also I need to uh, when I go to get those kind of those neck fat rolls up in here. We're gonna have to, we, I might have to lift his head up and, and do that again and then and putting it down. Uh, yeah, Chaos Masons are doing the Fortnite stand, skins and they're, it's spelled K-E-O-S, not, not the regular spelling of chaos. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get more resolution in here. Okay, so just so I can kind of mess with and try and get these little nostrils and things. So I'm just going to do a Z remesh again and do a 2000 instead of 1000. Oh, excuse me. So let's see. Auto groups. Um, it's a little bit more detail. That should give us enough because I'm going to need to do this crease down the center and, and, and make his lips happen. How did you add the edges? Um, so are you talking about the edges in the lip itself or just now? So just now I did a Z remesh, which increased the resolution of everything and added more edges. But if you want to do like one edge at a time, you use the Z modeler brush right here. And by default, if you hover over an edge, it says insert edge loop. So you can just click on an edge loop and, in, and make an, an extra edge there. Again, I'm just gonna edit this this cheek. It has this really sharp turn right here. Yeah, so you just use the Z modeler brush, or I did. That's what I did. I want to pull these in close. Let's put these in their own. Poly group. Uh, let's make them a different color like this. You can import that the cylinder and then do it in Sculptress Pro. 
Uh, yeah, you can, or you can just turn on Sculptors Pro and just go crazy with it. Just kind of pull it out, and make it work. Okay, so these come clear. Sculptors Pro is very forgiving, but it's also kind of dangerous um, if you're a new a new modeler. Oh, you miss. Where is it? Oh, why why isn't it here? Hold on a second. Thanks for telling me. I should have it here. I don't. Uh, I had I switched over to Streamlabs and I'm and I'm Pixelogic overlay. Let's see. I don't. I haven't added it in here yet. And my little keyboard and stuff too. So, well, why do I say Sculptors is dangerous? Because you can get yourself into trouble quickly because it adds a lot of detail very very fast and what you should be doing is focusing on the large shapes first before you add detail so yeah it'll it it, it will add uh, surface undulations very very quickly and very easily almost destroying your model making it just kind of a mess so you just have to be super careful when using sculptors pro not to um, introduce all of those surface undulations <laughs> mortar you're right <clears throat> yeah i'm in i'm in my um my rental place right now that's why i have a white background usually um usually i have uh my shelves behind me so What are you saying, Div? I, I missed it, sorry. How, how to know what size of model? Um, well, that's an interesting question because um, I also, with my brushes and my user interface, I give away my ruler file, which it comes with a ruler in here because ZBrush doesn't have uh, native size. It has just units, you know, just generic uh, ZBrush units. So what I do is I start with this ruler and afterwards what I'll do is I'll scale my character down to that ruler and you can see that I have like average female, average male and then the, um, the floor grid is also set up to centimeters and millimeters and um, the, the grid is set up to one meter tall, well two meters tall, sorry, there's one meter and two meters and I know that doesn't really work, that's not how meters work, I understand that, but if you you can use that's kind of how metrics work so you can divide you can think of this as a two meter two meter ruler or a 20 centimeter ruler it kind of works as both depending on your character size so um, going back and forth between something like Maya that uses meters um, this file I worked with Joseph Dress from Pixel Logic to to get this ruler file working to go eat uh, seamlessly back and forth between Maya and then I know a lot of people say, why don't you use GoZ? And the reason why is because it introduces some stuff. I just like to go cleanly with either an FBX or an OBJ file, go back and forth, and it just does it really cleanly so I don't have to worry about it too much. So anyway, all right. <laughs> so yeah, my old streams, like I still have my, my camera. My camera is sitting right here, but it's not hooked up. I have a nice camera that's kind of over the shoulder shot. Um, but my home will be done October 25th, and then I'll have to set up my studio. And then after that, I'll have my setup back again the way I had it in my old place. So how to download scale? Oh, so if you want my ruler, if you want this ruler file, it comes with my free brushes and stuff. So. Just go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and, and get it, and it will come with it. So that's how you... Also, another thing that I was talking to my students about the other day, and I, I keep forgetting that this is in here, but um, if you start with my ruler file every time... Okay, I'm going to solo this just so we can see just the ruler. Okay, if you turn on the gizmo by hitting like W, E, or R like this, so I have my gizmo, okay. Um, hey, what's up, Brandon? Um, and you, if I turn off the gizmo by clicking this button right here, this gizmo 3D, okay, 
and we show this transpose line. This transpose line is set up to measure in millimeters, okay? So you can see if I snap this to 10 millimeters and you look over here, see it's set to 100 units because that's 100 millimeters. So the transpose line is actually in this ruler file. It's set up to be a measuring device. So you can measure like from, from here to here. If you look at the units in the top left of the screen, you can see it's about 80 millimeters, which is eight centimeters, okay? So that's, that's, uh, this is a measuring tool that I use when I'm doing 3D prints a lot. I can measure the thickness of things like capes and clothing and things like that. Um, there's, also, uh, there's also a scale master plugin in here, but I, I never use it. I just use my ruler file and um, as long as I start with my ruler file and I bring my, my Z tools into this ruler file, I know that I'm good to go. You just make sure you don't ever scale the ruler to your model. You only scale the model to your ruler, okay? Okay, so let's see. Um, do small phone game companies also make retop? They use, yeah, they do retopology for sure. Or they just model, they, they really don't, sometimes uh, phone companies, they don't even use ZBrush, they'll just model it straight in um, like Maya or something like that. Because the reason you make a high resolution model is so you can do the retopology and bake the high resolution to the low resolution. So that's, that's the whole reason behind it, behind making a high resolution character. Okay. Let's see, let me turn this off, turn the ruler off, get back to making this work. Hey Mark, no, that's added since 2019. So if you wanna go grab it, grab a new version of it, you can. It's also, if you're in the course, it's in, it's in the resources, so you can find it in there too. Or you can just back, go back to the, the front page of my website, 3D Character Workshop, and just go grab it again, it's there. Yeah, I sent out an email when I first made it a long time ago, but you probably see so many emails from me that you're just like, ah, whatever. Um, sorry, yeah, there is. Here, let me let me just pop this chat down here so you guys can see it this way. How's that? So I, I'm streaming three different places right now. There's there's Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. So Oh man, can I turn it to always on top? Let me see. Na, 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 na. Downstream. Um, I don't know if I can make it always on top or not. Yep, I can. Okay. There it stays. All right. But low-res models must have UV before you transfer high details to the low-res, correct. All right, let's just work out this inner mouth some more. Here, let's, let's isolate it so we can get up in there. I bet Dennis wish that they could do that, you know, like isolate an upper mouth so they can get up in their in the teeth. <laughs> How cool would that be? I feel like I'm cheating when I do this stuff sometimes. Could you just hide half your face so I can get to your teeth, please? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the lips here. I just want to same as I did with the bottom lip and just insert a couple a couple uh, edges just to give it a little more detail across there when you started did you have to deal with I don't think you will get anything out of this family comments oh absolutely yeah yeah absolutely do you want to hear the story you can use X normal for transfer the details you just need UVs on the little polygon. Hey Shane, Shane, yeah, 
Awesome name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, X normal. Um, I I will use. I usually use a Marmoset tool bag to do my map baking. That's kind of an industry standard these days. Or you can do it in a Substance Painter. X normal is a free version. You can do it in there for free. The only thing I I'm not a fan of with X normal is you can't see a preview. You can't view your cages or like if your high resolution is a different scale than your low resolution, you might mess it up, you know? You might not know that you're having a problem that you can't see. That's, that's, I, I really like the maps that come out of X normal, but that's kind of the only problem I have with it is just the preview. You can't really see the preview. Um, Marmoset lets you adjust the cage really nice. So, um, well, it's, it's been a, it's been a while, right? So, cause I'm old guy, but back in the day, everybody's like, you're, you're not going to make, um, Samuel, you're thinking, uh, marvelous designer. Marmoset tool bag is for, um, baking maps, rendering, rendering your characters and, um, pushing them to something like ArtStation. Anyway, um, so in X normal, you can import a cage. Yeah, but that's an extra step that I don't want to do. So I'd rather just, you know, bring in my high, bring in my low, adjust the cage right in the file and then go. Because when you're making, when you're doing freelance and time is, time is money, the, the more, or the less time you spend messing with your cage, the better, right? So anyway... It was, uh, I, when I was young, you know, it's like, you're not going to make money with art. So I was kind of, and I've, I've always been an artist. I was, I've always been drawing. So, you know, I, I would get that. P different people would say different things. You know, you'll never make money with art. You'll always be poor, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, but my, my parents were super supportive. They actually um, enrolled me in art classes and stuff like that, which I, I extremely appreciate. Um, and, uh, but right out of high school, I'm like, well, what's the closest thing to art that I could do that still makes money, right? And so um, I ended up going to uh, a school for architectural drafting because I'm like, hey, you kind of, you draw when you're doing drafting and, uh, you know, <laughs> like, like drawing houses and stuff. So I'm like, that's close enough, right? So I enrolled in. Um, there was a school in Arizona called the Phoenix Institute uh, of Technology, and <clears throat> it's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it sucked. <laughs> I'm not, it's, it wasn't, let's just say it, it wasn't for me, okay? It wasn't for me because, you know, it's not, it's not very creative. You're following guidelines and rules and all sorts of stuff. It's not creative. And so I'm just like, all right, I can't, I can't, architecture is not for me. So I came home and I'm like, I guess I'm going to do graphic design, right? I'm like, so I went to a, a local community college. Hey, what's up, Juana? Um, for graphic design, because that's, I mean, it's not, it's not a crazy amount of money, but it can pay the bills, you know? So then I ended up in the, in the sign industry. So I was, I worked for a bunch of sign shops making signs and that was fun. I thought I was going to be doing signs forever. Um, so, well, this was, this will do, I'm old. Okay. You got to understand I'm, I'm like 48 now. And, uh, so this was back in like 1994. Okay. So this was before 3d and you, I, I, I didn't have 3D as an option back then. Um, and then when I was working in the sign shop, I saw an ad in the, the, the local newspaper. This was even before the internet. Jeez, that's, I'm way old. <laughs> before, before the internet. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I saw this ad for a, for a game tester for a local game company. And uh, I'm like, hey, I could go... I'm going to go apply for that. See, maybe I can make some money on the side, you know, and I, I like games. Sure. Let's do it. Um, so I went to, uh, I went to apply 
at this local shop called Sculptured Software, and they did ports of Mortal Kombat. So they they took Mortal Kombat from like say uh, the big video games, the big stand-up arcade games, and they ported them to like the PlayStation One and um, you know different consoles at the time. And I went down there and I applied, and they're like, "Yeah, we want you to play this game and tell tell us what's wrong with it, right?" And you need to do it after hours at night, and the pay isn't very good at all. So like, I don't want to do that. That sounds great. <laughs> that sounds bad. And and then um, at the same time, I saw that they were hiring artists, like world artists at the time, but and and character artists. I'm like, wait a minute, you guys hire hire artists here? What? How do you do that? Can I talk to one of them? You know? And I'm like, can can I talk to one of the artists that work here? And and they're like, sure. So they went in the back and they got one of the artists and brought him out. And uh, what's up, Dan? Hey, what's up, Scott? Um, and uh, they brought him out. I'm like, how do I do this? How do I get into this industry? And he was super nice, but he gave me the old, well, you need to go to school, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, there's no school that teaches this stuff. This was, so this is about 97, right? And I'm like, there's there's no school. There's nothing here local. I, I live in Utah, and there's nothing local that taught this stuff. And it just so happens that um, that I saw the school up in Seattle. It was called the Art Institute of Seattle. And they were just barely starting their 3D animation um, uh, course. Their, their, I could get a degree in, in computer animation. This is when Toy Story 1 just barely came out. Just barely came out, and so um, I'm like, okay, that's it's there. I can go to school there. Let's. I'm gonna go. So, um, so I went and I enrolled and, uh, and I moved to Seattle and I went and I got a degree in computer animation, and uh, and I was so when I started I was I was a modeler there and we were it was so new that we were actually kind of teaching the the professors, or if that's what you want to call them, the teachers. We were teaching the teachers because we had all this time and access to the computers and the teachers were kind of just kind of teaching part-time on the side. So we were just learning at an accelerated rate. Hey, what's up, Pete? And, uh, and, and so we, yeah, they had 3D Studio Max. Well, it was actually, <laughs> this will date me. It was actually 3D Studio version four in DOS. So it was this old, an alias wavefront on the silicone graphics machines, and um, it was soft homage. So I've been doing this, you guys, for 20, 21 years now. So, okay, we're going to, we're going to extrude this guy. I'm trying to think of how I want to do this nostril. I want to, um, <clears throat> you still have the 3.5? You do? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to crease this just along here just to kind of give Z-Remesher something to follow. So I'm just going to kind of crease this. You're so old. I'm so old. Thanks, Marty. So this is another thing. While I was going to school, I actually contributed to a book on, on 3D modeling inside of 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to show you this. It's called... Um, it was actually kind of close to my the name of my business now, but it was called 3D Creature Workshop instead of 3D Character Workshop. Maybe that's where I got the name from. But So um, this 3D Creature Workshop by Bill Fleming, I did the chapter in this book on 3D Studio Max. Um, see, back in 1998. That's when I was, and I was still going to school, and I wrote a chapter on how to model uh, this stuff. Hey, what's up, Brennan? Sorry, I'm going through my, my, my stupid history here. How's it going, you guys? So, you guys, Brendan's another streamer on here. He does uh, awesome, realistic uh, characters. And he he goes through uh, how to do some high-res stuff and really cool stuff. And I'm sad, dude. Brendan, I'm still sad you're not going to make it to the summit this year. Sad face. Hey, from Brazil. How's it going? Oh yeah, Bronco, absolutely. 
Absolutely. All right. So Marty, Marty's in the house. He's over on Facebook. He's the one who, who helped me find this dinosaur. So basically, just to um, explain it one more time, is it's uh, Sculpt Timber right now. It's this thing that uh, Ryan Kingsland's doing um, for, for his, uh, his class and stuff. And, and anybody's welcome to participate. Um, and the prompt for today is teeth. So it was between Venom, this, this version of Venom that is uh, Deadpool, if, if Deadpool got taken over by Venom, and then uh, this dinosaur. So we took a vote, and dinosaur won. First time in five years. Ah oh, man. Just get down here, dude. Just get down here. <laughs> You went to the Art Institute in Boston. I was going for computer science. Oh, you were at the same time. I've been programming in ASP since I was 14 and was teaching the professors. <laughs> yep. Still had to take the intro classes and hated it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I know, Hannibal. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right, let's get these, uh, let's get these nostrils. See what I can do with these nostrils. Um, <clears throat> so the idea for them was... I was just going to kind of uh, do them by hand with the Z modeler brush. Uh, so you've used 3 Studio Max, now you're using Maya. Can you tell me, please, should I switch to Maya? No, no. Um, honestly, the tool is a tool. Okay, so like Maya is a tool, Max is a tool, Blender is a tool, ZBrush is a tool. All of them are tools. Your skills are in how you use that tool, right? And your skills will transfer. So... Um, there are specific tools that are better at performing specific functions. Like you're not going to do brain surgery with a shovel. You're going to use scalpels and things like that. You're not going to dig a ditch with a scalpel. You're going to use a shovel. So use the right tool for the job. That's that's pretty much it. And as far as Max and Maya are concerned, they're pretty much the same program with a, a just little different buttons and sliders. That's all you. That's all you need to know is like where to find the levers you want to pull. So um, it's, and it's not, I mean, Autodesk owns both of them now. It used to be, uh, used to be owned by, uh, Autodesk used to own 3 Studio Max and Alias Wavefront owned Maya, I believe. Um, I, I loved 3 Studio Max for the longest time. I still do. I still have a, a, a place in my heart for it, but um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, uh, I like to sculpt now because it feels more artistic. I I modeled the old-fashioned way, meaning pushing points for the first 15 years of my career. And now that I have sculpting available to me, I much prefer to do that. Okay. You still have an Alias Wavefront art book? <laughs> That's fun. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out what faces I want to use to make this nostril. Let's go to the Z Modeler brush. Grab poly group, a single poly, and maybe, you know what, I'm going to grab these three right here. Even though they're kind of facing out and they're not facing up. Do you like to push points with a pen rather than a mouse? Uh, no, I sometimes. It depends on what I'm doing, honestly. But yeah, I much, I much prefer sculpting. Okay, so uh, let's go to Z model. We're going to extrude this out. Extrude, polygroup all. And then I'm just going to pull this out. And it's going to look funny for a minute. Effects animator, yeah, I've played with it a little bit. I, I installed it and messed around. It's just, all I can say is it's not there yet. <laughs> not there yet. But it has potential. The potential is there, and it looks it looks like... You know, that honestly would be the coolest thing, and it's coming. Everybody knows it's coming because we've we've all played with the sculpting in VR, but sculpting in VR would be amazing. And I've done a little bit of it, but it's again, it's not quite there. But the potential is like, oh man, I can't wait. Okay, I'm gonna move this up. <clears throat> Scopes with a mouse. 
No, no. I'm gonna turn off dynamic subdivision just so I can see um, what's going on here. Mask this off and we're just gonna, I still have the transpose tool going. Just gonna move this up and just kind of work the shape around while it's in this low poly mode. And it has this shape that kind of comes up and then uh, it has a, a kind of a pointed peak. Yeah, I can't, you know what? I'm, t <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, totally upfront with you. I'm tired of sitting on my butt. I'm sitting in this chair I want to stand up and use my whole body and sculpt and and like be able to throw my character around like a pizza <laughs> and just go crazy with it. You know what I mean? So uh, that's that's what's um, that's what has me interested m the most. And to be able to stand right next to my character and sculpt on it, it does uh, it does get tiring though. You know, like you you get fatigued much quicker. But if you, if there was a way to go kind of back and forth between sitting, doing some detailed work and then standing and doing the large work, that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> it's that kind of stuff. Hey, what's up, Gunter? Uh, your workflow has really brought me back to ZBrush. Thanks for that. You're, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm just wondering how many work do I need in my portfolio for a game studio? And what's the difference between a portfolio for animation film and a game studio? Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> So um, let me let me catch up here. I just got my valve index. Awesome. Yeah, that one looks fun. Um, I think what I like about the valve index is it has a broader range of view. So I'm excited about that one. Um, anybody here use a Cintiq? I'm actually on a 27 inch Cintiq right now. You can't see it because I'm looking in my webcam that's sitting on my Cintiq, but I'm not able to assign express keys to ZBrush specifically. You should be able to. It will only use the all other setting. Um, I haven't gotten into it that much because I use a keyboard that's on a tray underneath my Cintiq, so that's kind of how I use it. Um, let's see. Um, is rendering is a rendering engine for presentation? I think for clothes you might be marvelous designer. Yet, yeah. uh, seeing your character in a real world scale scale hard to beat that. Absolutely, that's what I'm talking about, right? Standing right next to it, going, seeing it really up close, being able to scale it and stuff like that. Trying out Masterpiece VR? Huh, I'll have to check that out. Very messy, yep, that's the problem, right? It's just nothing is quite there. I would love to see ZBrush in VR. That's That would be the thing, right? <laughs> Ian? <laughs> yeah, 3D models, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm, I sculpt. <laughs> Don't wanna get too huge. Oh man, yeah, for sure, Jets. Okay, so to answer your question, uh, Gunt, um, <laughs> about three D modelers. Here, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut another line in here, right here. Insert edge loop, just so I have it here and I have it here. And then I want to um, assign some new polygon or some new here faces. Poly group single. I want to create these in a new poly group like this because I want to. It, extrude them in okay so how many pieces should you put in your portfolio uh, the real answer to that is it doesn't matter it, it, it you put enough in there to show the company that you can do the work that they want you to do that's that's the amount so you can do two amazing characters in there um, you can have five amazing characters in there you don't want to have a ton of them because people are busy. They don't have time to sit and look at every single character. So uh, there's not an absolute, you know, best answer for that. But I would say anywhere from two to six ish, you know, um, like if you have, if you, if you just have characters in there that are showing that you can do the work, that's kind of the goal. I mean, it is the goal. It's not kind of the goal. It is the goal is just to say, Hey, you you need characters i can build them okay that's kind of what you're saying with your portfolio and everybody kind of gets hung up on 
what should I put in there? You know what? And like uh, like my friend Gavin Golden says, he works at Insomniac, um, or he, yeah, um, he says you're not an animator. You don't need a demo reel, which is absolutely true. You don't need a demo reel. You just need to show people your work and your 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 still images, showing that you can make maps and you can make characters that will deform properly. So, and the other question was, what's the difference between making models for animation versus making models for games? Um, the difference is the is the resolution and the map output. So with film, you're typically using what's called UDIMs, which are larger UV maps that cover more of the characters so you can get more resolution. And then in game characters, you're using uh, uh, normal maps. Why couldn't I think of that? Normal maps. So you don't use normal maps in games, you actually use displacement maps and you use subdivision surfaces. So this is subdivision surface. When I hit D right here, so this is unsubdivided, this is subdivided. Okay, so subdivided surfaces you use in film, that's actually, they render that out. And then they use displacement maps to actually displace the geometry to get the details in the surface. And they can do subdivision surfaces at render time. And um, in game engines, you just don't get that luxury because you, they, the game engines cannot support subdivision surfaces yet. I don't know if they ever will, but they can't at this time. So you have to fake it with normal maps. That's the difference. <clears throat> Hello from Hungary. How's it going? Some people say only show your best two to six, but then have another 10 more ready to show if someone asks to see them. Yeah, effects animator. A lot of people like to see your progress and they like to see... Um, like, for example, a concept artist, a lot of people like to see their sketch work as, as well as their finished work because then they can see how you, um, how you construct your drawings rather than just how you polish your drawings. That's two different skills there. And it's the same goes for sculpting. They want to see your low resolution and your high resolution. You'll see on ArtStation, a whole bunch of people will post these high resolution models and they won't post their low resolution models with their maps and all that kind of stuff. Well, guess who's not gonna get hired? The people that are not showing that they can do low resolution characters. You have to show that you can do the work or you're not gonna get hired. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, what am I, I'm just gonna go through here. Da, 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 da. Well, thanks Valencia. Uh, let's see, some people say only, uh, do you have tips on not getting afraid of making mistake in ZBrush? It prevents me from trying different things out. Yes, so the, the best thing you can do is one of two things, okay? You either save off a version, so you know that you can always go back to that version, or you duplicate your subtool, okay? So what I mean by that is, say I have this head right here, and if I duplicate this, so now I have two of them, and I hide my original, now I have a backup, so now I'm not afraid to mess it up. So if I want to like experiment with this big nostril snout of him, and I want to try and go bigger, I can grab the move elastic brush, and I can just try and push things around and see what it looks like if I take, if I do a shorter snout, but it's like bigger, then I can try it without being afraid because I know that I can always go back to what it was before, right? So that's, that's the best way to do it, is just give yourself a backup. Or do go up here and do save as, and save out your, your model here. Let me do um, dino teeth. Dino teeth. Okay, where are we at? 119, okay. Um, game engines are getting there. They support real-time tessellation and displacement now. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, you're worried. You're uh, welcome, Gun. Let's see, when you did Disney Infinity, did you also do the retopo as well as the high res? We did in the beginning and then we outsourced it towards the end just because the it, it got to be just so much work for us to do everything. We were just making so many characters that we had to outsource a lot of that stuff. 
but you we absolutely had to know how to do it so then we could do um we could give give feedback to the outsource people so okay yeah you're welcome all right hey what's up Emmett? okay Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to put the teeth in with insert multi mesh brush here in a second. But do I do I ever like go and find insert multi mesh teeth? Not really, unless I'm doing like a realistic character. But most of the time, I'll just use my insert appendage brush for the teeth. This one right here, and then I'll just reshape it and then duplicate it around. I'm going to do that here in a minute. You'll see how it's how I do it. All right. You guys are asking awesome questions today, but it's it's. Uh, I need to I need to get going. <laughs> I'm kind of getting lost in the in talking, but it's good. It's good. Got to make some progress here. Just making some volume adjustments. This cavity is super deep, so. I'm trying to work on getting that deeper there. And then this head is even smaller. Something like that. Yeah, that works. Okay. So I'm going to put the tongue in and then we'll put some gums in and then the teeth. It's funny, I just barely got done doing a, um, I'm working on a brand new module in my course called uh, Stylized Anatomy. And in that Stylized Anatomy module, I'm, I just got done talking about the teeth. So this is uh Kind of a refresher for me. I made these nostrils way too big. Let's pull them down, make them smaller. They're just little guys. Kind of looks like a hippo face. It comics legend. It does indeed. Yep. So I can here. Let me just. Let me just let you look look at it really fast. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about really quick. So this is this is everything you get. Um, let me just move this chat window. Um, this is the main course right here, and see the stylized anatomy right here. I'm slowly dripping out all these lessons, like the hands and the head and like the teeth. I just finished the nose, it'll go up uh, probably today or tomorrow. Um, so that's, and that's what they look like. And if you go in here, you have this, the video talking about the teeth and how to make the gums and all that kind of stuff. And um, have some wonderful picks by Mitch Leeway to support it. So super cool stuff. And then um, you asked about 3D printing. If you go back to this additional training and resources in here, and um, right here, it's uh, prepping your model for 3D printing, part one and two, and troubleshooting your model for 3D printing. So that's those three lessons right there. So there's some behind the scenes for you. <laughs> okay, let's get the tongue in there. For the tongue, I usually just use a sphere. It's easy. And just kind of scale it down, move it, scale it. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, Mitch is incredible. His it's it's interesting how his style um, is so close to kind of my style of, of building characters. Serendipitous. That's how you say it. We'd love a course on how to make, how to model the infinity Boba Fett. 
Um, I cover exactly how uh, all the things that I went through to create him, but not not exactly creating him. You just kind of repeat the same things over and over and over again, the same steps. Okay, I'm going to drag this. Uh... <laughs> Look at that. What kind of character is this? It's like those. Yep, 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 yep. Uh huh. <laughs> From Sesame Street. Those guys. All right, I'm gonna just kind of push this down and make a uh... Oops, let's see. How do you enter possibly win a course during the Zipper Summit? Will the possibility only be available to attendees or on? So it's actually only online people. It's not, it's, they don't give it away to, lo to people that are there. It's online only. And basically um, the announcer will say, in between um, in between talks they will give away prizes so uh, they will they will do a question I think it's on Twitter and you have to put a hashtag something with the answer and then they pick I don't know if they pick randomly or if they pick whoever answers it first I'm not sure what they do but uh, they give it away that that way what's up shovel mouth Pull this throat back into his head. And then we'll pull this one up. Yeah, so you can try to win it that way. I was actually thinking about just on my own um, changing Boba Fett into the new Mandalorian from the new Mandalorian show on, that they're making. Oh, that would be kind of fun. Okay, is there any is there any way to import normal maps into ZBrush from another package? We have normal maps created in Blender, but we need to manipulate and damage them in ZBrush. Oh, oh, you want a Danny Williams on my? Okay, awesome. So, oh gosh, how would I do that? I don't think I do that. I, I you can't really paint out normal maps that way in ZBrush. That's not like I would use something like Quixel or something that you actually paint on the normal maps themselves, not necessarily because you kind of have to have geometry. You can't, you, well, not that I know of, you can't translate a normal map back into geometry that I know of because you always get your geometry from, uh, from the or you always get your normal map from the geometry so you would have to damage like the actual geometry and then produce a new normal map off of that but I yeah so yeah Danny's Danny is amazing he is um, he's back east now and um, yeah he's he's a good friend of mine that uh, I'm so glad Danny's posting again he started posting again and um, he uh, He's a really good teacher. I've, I've modeled a lot of my teaching off of him, and he's the first one I've ever seen that did a, a custom user interface for ZBrush. He got me into doing that. So, um, is your is my course a lifetime membership? Absolutely. Yep, it is. So pay once. It's just it's kind of like uh, Pixelogic does. It's pay once, and uh, that's it. So that's kind of how how Pixelogic has always been. I really love his perspective and things. Yeah, he's he's great. He's super good. And he's a great he's just a really great teacher and great guy. He takes it slow and doesn't leave you behind, you know, and covers covers everything. And he's also a good he's a good concept artist as well as a good sculptor, so um yeah, he's just good at that stuff. <laughs> is that what is that what Danny said? I'm not a, really a 2D guy or a 3D guy. I'm an artist. I just want to get paid to make art. Yeah, that sounds like Danny, for sure. And it's true. It's absolutely true. And he actually found a job that will, would allow him to do some concept art too, which is rare. It's very rare. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down. Turning on uh, 
perspective, just to check it in perspective. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull these eyes up because they're kind of this weird pointed shape, which is, I don't know how big of a fan I am of pointed shaped eyes. Oh, I see. We have models previously made in Blender with normal maps. You need to manipulate the models with normal maps applied to create new damage versions. Yeah, I understand that, Dan. I just don't know. Like, I honestly, what I would do, well, I don't know that you can, though, is I would try and find the original geometry of the, of the character, bring that into ZBrush, damage it, and then bake new normal maps to the low resolution from those damaged models, if that makes sense. That's kind of how I would go about it because otherwise you're going to have to find a map manipulation software like Quixel to damage the normal maps. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense, but that's kind of how I try and go about it anyway. Okay. Um, trying to think of what I want to do next. I might... I want to get some of this neck stuff in here, but I'm going to do the teeth because I have only have a half an hour left. And since this is teeth, scope timber teeth, let's get the teeth in there. So I'm going to hide this. It's so funny. Okay. <clears throat> do the teeth. Come on. <laughs> so Done. Teeth. Ship it. <coughs> Gosh. Sorry. Struggling with a, a throat cold. I think I got an expo cold from the Lightbox Expo. <laughs> you got a pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to put gums in here. Payday. <laughs> You make some teeth? Yeah, I make some teeth. So, let's see. It is, it's here. So, I just look for Sculpt Timber prompts, but today's the 16th teeth right here. Um, but it's being put on by uh, GAI, uh, Ryan Kingsland. So, yeah, that's what it is. You can see. And Trey, Trey's been doing a ton. Trey's a student of mine. He's been doing awesome. This is his, too. So, anyway. Animating dental stuff. That's that's actually, I, I would, that's probably a good paying gig. Doing a doing dental stuff and medical stuff. Medical stuff and dental stuff pay well, the animations of it. Because it's like, either for like commercials, you know, like drug commercials, or like uh, there's um, info videos that teach doctors how to do procedures. Goodness. So I'm gonna make these a little bit skinnier like this. Okay, now let's, I'm just going to put some gums in so I have some, uh, you know, a base to put the teeth into. Base. <laughs> Pump up the base. Okay. Oh, you did, Brendan? Ah, that's your secret. <laughs> the guy that I worked with named uh, Brian Allen, you've probably seen it, his... Uh, Stuff on Art Station. He goes by B. Allen on Art Station. He he did medical stuff for a long time before working at Disney, as well. It's, it's it can be lucrative, but boring. <laughs> like, get out of my mouth, people. <laughs> okay, so this one I'm gonna do. Um, I'm basically stretched out this appendage brush. I'm making some gums, and I'm gonna split it off into its own, whoops, I can't do it if it's hidden. So I'm gonna split this off into a new subtool. And where did it go? Right here, let's solo it. 
What? Oh gosh, because I unhit it. Okay. Try it again. Split hidden. I just want these two things. There we go. My my gum channels. Grab the snake hook and we're just gonna kind of bend these two around to the front of the mouth. Just destroy them essentially. And then when they get close, just inflate them across the center. Then I'm doing this so horribly. And then I'm going to stitch them together using the gizmo. Where'd you go, gizmo? Oh, there you are. Okay, so <clears throat> remesh by union, stitch them together. Say accepts, turn symmetry back on, and then remesh these. Uh, let's go target count one. This should fix it, hopefully. Come on. There. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm going to undo that and actually turn off dynamic. What a mess. These are messy. Okay. Promise I'm going somewhere with these. Okay. <laughs> what a mess. Okay. Now let's see remesh that. That's better. Okay. Still too high. I can go. You can go less than than one. There we go. So these will be his new gums. There we go. See that? See how that works? And then we'll just uh, squish them around to fit so they make sense. Then we can move the tongue in so it's not colliding with those gums so it kind of sits down in there better. Okay, now we can make uh, gum like tooth sockets. Teeth sockets? Tooth sockets? just kind of pull it up in between the teeth and pull it down where there's teeth <laughs> and I probably would actually do better when if there was more geometry so I'm gonna subdivide it once and delete the lower subdivision level so I could Z remesh it but we'll just do that okay so now what we can do is just grab this tooth that we have and I'm gonna split that off to group split and put it in in its own Subtool, that way what I can do is um, I can duplicate it. So basically what I did is I just held down Alt and tapped on that tooth, placed the gizmo over this tooth, and now I can hold down Control and drag it, and it will duplicate it. And then I can just go about like resizing it, fitting it in there, that kind of stuff. Teeth. <clears throat> Thanks, Jefferson. Appreciate it. Getting there. You have old gizmo Stockholm syndrome. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, I'm going to space these out a little bit. Just kind of add some variety. I want to get some. So, what I do, and I was just talking to Marty about this, is uh, I'll do uh, the teeth symmetrically. And then I will make them asymmetrical after the fact. So we'll make them symmetrically first. Turn these guys. And then I just want one in the center. So how do we get just one? Well, we could do, whoops. We could uh, duplicate these and get them as close to the center as possible like this so it looks like a, a candy corn because <laughs> he's it looks like he's got one tooth kind of in the center which is fun um, I don't know how this is gonna work is there a way to not not in ZBrush ZBrush really doesn't have instancing okay so now that that's that's kind of overlapping each other we can go mirror and weld 
and that will mirror this and make two objects out of it. So if you go auto groups, you can see now there's two objects. There's one on the inside and one on the outside, making the difference between the two. So I just want to delete one of those. So let's delete uh, this one. Sorry. Yeah, now it's hidden. Let's go delete hidden. And there we go. And we can drag. What's interesting about mirror and weld is see how it now has this weird kind of middle, middle faces happening here. We can do one of two things. We can just Z remesh it, which is what I'll probably do. Or I could um, drag, I could turn off symmetry and then drag the, the, the offending area over to the right a little bit and then hit uh, mirror and weld again and it will kind of fix it. But it still has some weird stuff going on. So I'm going to uh, Z remesh it. <clears throat> so let's Z remesh this at 1000, sure. Our medical projects are pretty interesting. We do interactive 3D apps of medical conditions for attorney use. Really? That's interesting. What if I can turn on keep groups with this? Keep groups. There we go. Now we can keep our groups. You see, it kind of kind of fixed things a little bit. Except for I didn't have symmetry turned on, so let's try it one more time. There we go. That's better. All right. Don't have to be perfect. They just have to work. So now we can just drag this tooth up front. Is that for like uh, like malpractice cases or what? What was what would I'm trying to think of what that would be used for? You do scientific botany illustration, really? Man, interesting, interesting, interesting careers. Okay, now we have teeth. Teeth. I oh, could probably use one more going back. Let's duplicate this guy. Maybe two more even. There we go. Is Emma here? Oh, hey, how's it going? Let's uh, push this in. Now, every time you duplicate teeth or something, what it does is it's going to put the new object into the exact same polygroup that the other one was in. So you can see these all have their own polygroup and it, it has symmetry. Really nice. But once you get back to here, uh, it starts to combine all the polygroups in the same. And then they're all kind of twisted they're not align, aligning up with the gum. So I'm gonna do each one. Basically what you can do is uh, mask it off like this, hit Control W, and that's gonna put it in its own polygroup. And just do it again. And now we have separate polygroups. I can just hit Control, tap on one, and just rotate it so it, it's in alignment with the gums. I'm just gonna move it around. I'm just kinda of guessing where those gums are at this point. Sometimes mid malpractice, a lot of post-accident versus post-surgery comparisons. So our app shows the client's condition after accident and then what they had to endure to get it fixed. I see. That makes sense. Wow. So it's kind of a... That's crazy. Crazy interesting <clears throat> that that's a thing. Okay. So now we have our teeth going on here and we can uh, now we can use these the same set of teeth for the top teeth but just we'll just uh, move them around so so then they when his mouth closes they can kind of inter interlock <laughs> your architecture degree is paying off I didn't get an architecture degree I just kind of went to one quarter and I'm like F it I'm out <laughs> <coughs> Okay, before I do that though, I'm gonna actually come in here and um, adjust the gums to match these teeth. So let's uh, isolate these. Okay. And then move these the gums around. 
Actually, before I do that, I'm going to duplicate because I can save myself some time by uh, duplicating the gums before I add all the sockets in there because I'm going to be moving the teeth around for the upper teeth. So um, I might as well uh, save, save me some work. So I'll duplicate this and I'll duplicate these and then I'll just hide them and then I'll just work on this one. The old gig I had in medical when we did similar cone beams, Connecticut, and did pre and post facial reconstruction surgery scans. Oh my goodness, that's interesting. I won't. I won't let you know what uh, the story. <laughs> the stories Brian told me. Oh my goodness. So he would. Brian would do some uh, medical stuff for doctors, like how to do procedures. And um, like having to do with like people's genitals and things, <laughs> just put it, to put it bluntly. And he's like, yeah, I had to model all that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, he had some he had some experience. <laughs> he he worked at a place called Viewpoint too for a while, and Viewpoint made made models they're kind of like the turbo squid of, of in days of old uh, jefferson i used to work at disney interactive for 10 years so kind of so i didn't work at disney feature but i worked at disney interactive So you do oh you do build from scans that's cool you gotta you gotta learn a lot from that you know from seeing like scans how because you have a perceived idea of how things are and then how things actually are when you see a scan of it is so much different uh andy no i i have not worked in feature film just games so my career is all games And I've done freelance work for other studios, like I did, I did an Overwatch skin, and um, yeah, just a whole bunch of different things. I worked for Incognito Sony for a while. Oh, to keep keep with that story, so the the same uh, the same company that I applied for the uh, game tester at. Um, it, Sculpture Studios, it got bought by Iguana, and then it got bought by um, Acclaim. So I actually ended up working there as a character artist in, you know, later on in my career. And that was, like, surreal because that's kind of where I got into it, right? It's like, oh, thanks, Neil. Oh, really, Aaron? <clears throat> wow, that's crazy. So many opportunities that you can, that you don't even know exist in like medical 3D and scanning and stuff like that. Okay, come on, save the project. <clears throat> Hopefully we don't crash. I better save it for reals. Yeah, ZBrush is really nice for anatomical models. Like you can put in all the details and veins and all that kind of stuff. All the and you know, uh, I've heard Z spheres are really, really good for like tubes and veins and things like that. Okay, so let's let's uh, <clears throat> get the top gums in here. So how I do this with the upper gums is I will turn off symmetry and reset the gizmo and essentially hold down shift and snap it 180. How long do you think it took you to be able to fully support yourself and your family through freelance alone? I've honestly, I've never done, I've never done a hundred percent freelance to support myself. So it's probably not the answer you want to hear. Although a lot of people do and they, they are very successful at it. And how long it takes you is um, essentially kind of how fast you can learn and what kind of jobs you can find. 
it's it's all kind of luck of the draw as far as the jobs you can find and um, I, I could probably support myself full-time freelance now that I have the experience and the career behind me but um, first starting out uh, it's it's all about getting those first few jobs and getting the experience that you need to then say yeah I can do I can do the freelance jobs for you and be able to charge what you need to charge in order to pay the bills you know what I'm saying so and be fast enough that it would make sense for both you and the client uh, as far as like how how lucrative it is for for both of you you know anyway <clears throat> well it honestly Dan it, it does depend though like I've done freelance jobs where I'm my sole job is just to do character art I've done I've done that so it's possible but yeah you you can get more jobs the more skills you have because you'll be um, I don't know you'll just have more opportunities that way but it's not necessary like you don't need to to be a, you don't need to know how to rig or animate but if you do then you can get rigging and animation jobs so that's what I'm talking about like how skilled you are and how many jobs you can get because there's a lot more rigging jobs out there than there are character modeling jobs for sure because nobody wants to do it <laughs> the only way I can do freelance is because of commercial retouching there's not that much 3d work where I am have to go for the remote jobs that's that's a case that's a lot of uh, people's case Sorry. Okay. Let's see. Okay, now I can do the same thing with these teeth. I'm just gonna flip them over. I'm turning turning off symmetry, resetting the gizmo into the middle of the world, bringing it down and flipping it over. Just like this. Hey, what's up, Ezra? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> no worries. I can turn on transparency too to see kind of where they're at in his mouth and then just kind of uh, line them up and then start editing, moving them around so they match the lower teeth. So I'm actually gonna delete this center one now since I don't need it. Turn symmetry back on. Oh really? So Emma, did do you work with um, Paul DC? Because I saw him at the Lightbox Expo. It's like I think she works right next to me. Okay. If you're Emma. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I get people mixed up. Okay. You have any indication site for freelance jobs um, the uh, so the best place I have found and I my, all of my stuff is honestly it's word of mouth and which is uh, is not helpful Oops. but the what I can recommend is is put uh, looking for freelance on your art station and some people will find you that way but sometimes it's not not jobs that you necessarily want, so just be kind of careful when people approach you through ArtStation, because sometimes they want free free work, which sucks. Okay, let's see. Boom. Just gonna try. I'm trying to kind of imagine these teeth lining up when his mouth is closed. Sometimes I'll actually close the mouth and line up the teeth that way, and then open it back up. But we're kind of running out of time, so. It is what it is. Well, dang it, Emma. Sorry you're not going. Maybe next year, eh? <clears throat> Hopefully. So I'm going to turn these in a little bit. And i got to show that upper gums. The gums are like clear out there, so I need to, need to move these teeth out further to the front, too. 
this. And just by offsetting them, then all of a sudden they line up too. <laughs> offsetting them forward. You can do offset them underneath or over, it doesn't matter, depending on the character, if he's got an underbite or an overbite. The character that I'm um, currently streaming for my students has an underbite. He's a lot of fun. Oh, you might be working in Canada? That'd be fun. What's your opinion on freelance work? I try my hardest to not to take it unless it's something I really, really want to do. Uh, freelance is fine as, as long as the client that you're working for is good to work for, which is hard to find, honestly. Um, but basically, if you can find somebody that's good to work for and, uh, and they pay on time and, you know, the, the characters that you're doing, you like working on, it can be really nice. Um, for example, I did some stuff for Playful in, in Texas, and I love working for those guys. So it just depends, and I've, I've only done freelance for them, so it just depends on who they are, what they're doing, and if you want to do the kind of work that they're wanting you to do. It makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, you don't want to do free work. <laughs> Absolutely not. <clears throat> but a lot of people take advantage of desperate artists that want to break into the industry, you know? Wanting to pay you an exposure and that kind of crap. No, you don't want to do free work. Absolutely not. Come on, show it. Show it. There it goes. Okay. Um, some Okay, the only time I will ever do something for quote-unquote free, and it's not really free, is for a uh, contest and only specific contests. So like the art station contest or um, like the no, if the Noman has one or, you know, just contests that are put on by websites that show character art. Um, like the Retrogasm one is pretty good. And the reason why those are good is because A, it gives you a reason to sculpt. B, you're not giving your models away to anyone. And C, you get seen. Like your stuff will get seen to potential uh, clients, you know. So those kind of, that's that, that kind of free work, it's not really free work. It's more like a contest. But if you ever see some some company that's wanting to do a contest that's like pitting you against other freelancers, like saying, you know, we, we're doing this game, like say, we're doing this fighting game and we, we're, we're doing a contest and if you win, then we'll pay you. Yeah, never do that, ever, okay? And I, it really, it really uh, grinds my gears <laughs> when, when I see business owners saying, just, if you don't wanna pay for art, just do a contest. Oh man, I want to I want to <laughs> jump over the fence and pummel him. Because <laughs> you wouldn't do that with like any other any other profession. Like you wouldn't do that with plumbers. Okay, plumbers, come over to my house and whoever fixes the pipe the best gets the job. You know what I'm saying? It's oh, people take advantage of artists and it just makes me angry. All right. Uh, I did, I did Neil. Um, I modeled the, the female, fox girl, and I modeled the, uh, the boss, the big boss kitty. Good night from Mar Barcelona. Hey, what's up, Sergi? Yeah, free advertising. Uh, I said advertising. Advertising. <laughs> I know ZBrush workflow and stuff. Now I jump to the blender and can't figure out how to make a text in three D. <clears throat> The great, the great, the great plum off. Oh, that's hilarious. 
Yeah, uh, Contem, it's just a matter of learning, learning how to, where all the buttons and switches are. Like I said, it's just a tool. Okay. Let's do... So here's how he's looking so far. I think he looks weird without ears. Why don't dinosaurs have ears? They have like holes in their head, like a bird, I think. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway. <laughs> Me. Yep. That's the great plum off, right? But seriously, you know, you just don't see that in other in other professions. Why why artists? I know. This, the twist. Yeah, just twist it really fast. Um at, Brandon, I was actually thinking, see see these uh See these fat rolls underneath where the transition is going from his mouth to his neck? I really wanted to get those in there. Um, but I think it's going to have to wait till next time. I'll get that in. I want to um, I want to put the, uh, you know, merge them together and actually put them in there. So it's got these rolls and stuff. So anyway, yep, you're right. Get some, make those teeth smaller. They, they're, they're poking out a little bit too far. I'll just push him up into his face a little more. There we go. And pull, pull his gums up too. <laughs> Look at those. Look at those choppers. Mostly gums. That's fun. Can you show us a quick polygroup of the dinosaur? What do you mean? Um, I'm not. I'm. I don't have time to uh, merge him all together and do. Are you talking about like the? The poly loop rings and stuff like that. Oh, sure. If you want to see Shift F, sure. It's just like that. He's in a whole bunch of different sub tools, so. Yeah. <laughs> so he's still in pieces. Poly frame. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. So I'm still working on. I'll do. Uh, yeah, we'll. We'll do one more session with him. I got to color him. We'll do some scales. It might be fun. Um, I want to make his his bottom well, his bottom mouth wider. See how it just needs to be wider. It's too thin. And then get him in get him posed like this. It'd be kind of fun. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been fun. Um, I yeah, like I said, this if you want to do sculpt timber like this, you can go check out. Just do a Google search for sculpt timber prompts and you'll find it um what are you talking about if you turn polyframe wait if you turn polyframe on then do a pbr render it will render all in point really oh learning i'm learning are you talking about this oh no kidding okay except for that shadow is crazy all right let's turn the shadow down Floor shadow, global shadow. Let's turn it way down. Do it again. All right, sweet. Oh, very cool. I didn't know that, Brennan. Thank you. That's really cool. Um, at what point in the process do you start to pose the character? So I have to merge them all together and then re Z remesh him and color him up and then do some scales and stuff. And then I, I usually save the pose for very last. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for hanging out, Brennan. It's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thanks so much. Um, again, if you want these brushes and this user interface and my ruler file, you can find them over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I also teach an online course teaching you how to make characters like this over there. You can check that out as well. So uh, thanks again for hanging out and enjoy the rest of your week. If you're going to ZBrush Summit, uh, feel free to come up and say hello. I'll be there walking around with my old man hat on. You can just say hi and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. And Brennan, I'll, I'll wave at you if, I, if I'm in the camera and say hi, Brennan. So hope, I'm sad you're not going, man. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you. Catch you next time. Cheers. Bye.